here are the two bones that form the pectoral girdle, which forms the, the girdle for our upper limb, so our, kind of our shoulder area. There's two bones, there's, these are actually, there's two of them of each. There's two clavicles shown here. This is the collarbone. And then there's two scapula or shoulder blades shown here. So our, we'll look at the clavicle first. So here you have the clavicle and one end of the clavicle anchors to the manubrium of the sternum and the other anchors to what's known as the acromion of the scapula. So again, here's the clavicle and there's two, a right and a left. We're going to put that to the side and go ahead and take a look more closely at the scapula or the shoulder blade. This is the an anterior view. So if I'm looking at you in the face, looking through the chest muscles and the lungs and all that, this is the, the part I would see, so anterior of the scapula. So the, I'm going to go ahead and start because most of us usually and most figures will actually start in the posterior view of the scapula here. So this is if I'm looking at you to the back of your head, this is what I would see. So let's go ahead and name some, some parts of the scapula, the shoulder blade. And there's a right and a left. And here is, this is a part, this is a uh, looking at it from the uh, lateral view. And you can see here there's this round, uh, not very deep, but this round socket. This is called the glenoid fossa or the glenoid cavity. And the glenoid is on the lateral edge and it forms an articulation site with the head of the humerus, the arm bone. So this is where my arm would attach. And so this is the glenoid fossa or the glenoid cavity, either is spine. And then this is what we have three borders, three edges of the scapula. So if this is the glenoid on the lateral part, then this is the lateral edge or the lateral border. And if this is lateral, this is medial. So this would form towards the middle of the back. This is my medial border or medial edge. And then you also have the superior edge here the superior. So this is the superior and here we have the inferior forming a point of the scapula. So from the back we have several other parts as well. So again this is a posterior view and this is called the spine of the scapula. The spine of the scapula and it serves as an attachment site for muscles of the back. And you can actually see the spine of the scapula if you look at someone's back. This is actually an external anatomy that you can find. And you can see that the spine of the scapula extends superiorly here to the, what's known as the acromion process. And that's where the, the, cla uh, the clavicle would articulate. The acromion process is attached to the spine of the scapula. There's a couple of other fossa. Generally when we think of fossa, we think of them as articulation sites for other bones, for a joint. But the scapula has not only the glenoid fossa, which forms an articulation site with the head of the humerus, a bone, but it also has three other fossa that don't articulate with bones, but serve as, as attachment sites and locations for, for muscles. So we're gonna look at two of them right now. This is the spine of the scapula, we recall. And then this is below the spine, so this is called the infraspinous. And so we call this the infraspinous. Infra means below, spinous means of the spine. So this is the spine, this is the infraspinous fossa, where a muscle that moves the, a muscle of the back sits. And then again the spine, and you can see here if we look at this superiorly, so now we're looking down on the scapula. And here we have the supraspinous, the supraspinous fossa. Again, supra means superior to, spine, spinous. So the supraspinous fossa. So the parts here we can see again are, we have our lateral edge or lateral border, our medial border of the scapula, our superior border of the scapula, the spine of the scapula, the acromion process or acromion of the scapula, the infraspinous fossa, the supraspinous fossa, the glenoid fossa. And then we're going to continue rotating. Again, this is a lateral view. We're going to continue rotating, coming back to the anterior view, the front of the scapula. And here we have what's known as the sub scapular fossa, subscapular fossa. Sub means below or under, like submarine. And the subscapular fossa refers to the fact that we would generally find the scapula from the back. 
So if we're coming at it from the back, this would be underneath it, even though it's technically an anterior view. So here again, we have the subscapular fossa, the third of the fossa of the scapula that don't actually form a joint with another bone. And then the last part that we can see here is this what's known as the coracoid process, the coracoid process. And it's this anterior protrusion. Again, here's a lateral view. This is the front and the back of the scapula. And here we have the coracoid process. And the coracoid process is an important attachment site for muscles of the arm that help move the arm, this coracoid process. And you can see it projects somewhat anteriorly if we're looking at this from the side. So again, here you can see that coracoid process. Here again, the lateral edge. If we're looking at this from the front of the, sc of the scapula, here's the lateral edge. We always know the lateral edge because it's the same side as the glenoid fossa. And then here's the medial edge. And then the superior edge.